Howdy, howdy everyone. Chris here and welcome back to Garage Noise. Today we're painting and clearing this Colorado door. Everybody wants that glassy looking clear coat. And if you want to get the best results in your clear coat and eliminate orange peel, this video is for you because I'm going to show you a few different spraying techniques and how to tweak some of your gun settings so you can get the best results possible when you're spraying clear coat. So the number one question I get in the comments is how do I get that glassy looking finishing and eliminate my orange peel? So let's talk about some of the things that can cause orange peel other than your spraying technique because we're going to go over that later on in this video. I'm going to show you how to dial that in. A couple things outside of your spraying technique that can cause orange peel is you're using the wrong activator with your clear coat. You want to use the right speed activator for the temperature that you're spraying in. Peel. If it's a really hot day out and you're using a medium or a fast activator, that clear coat is going to be drying when it hits the panel and it's not going to give that clear coat time to flow. So you need a little bit of flow to let that clear coat naturally level out. That'll help tremendously using the correct activator for the temperature you're spraying in. Another thing that you might not have thought about is the type of clear that you're using. A European clear or a high solids clear, like a two to one mixing ratio clear, is a little bit thicker product. So you, may, you need to make some adjustments. Some of those clear coats need to be reduced or should be reduced. If you're using a four to one clear coat, you shouldn't have a problem. But different clear coats flow out differently. Just keep that in mind as well. If you're using the right spraying technique and you've got your gun adjusted properly, you shouldn't have a problem with that. So let's talk about how to set up your gun. The gun I'll be using today is the AeroPro A610. This is a low volume, low pressure paint gun. It's not a high dollar expensive paint gun. I wanted to show you this with this gun just so you know you can produce a beautiful looking finish without a thousand dollar gun or an eight hundred dollar gun. You can use an inexpensive gun and still get a beautiful looking clear coat. I know that this gun optimizes clear coat best at about 30 PSI. So we're going to set our air pressure at 30 PSI right off the bat. Now I want to start out with our fluid volume. We have four things that really matter when you're applying your clear coat. We've got your air pressure, we've got your fluid volume, the speed that you're spraying at and the distance you're spraying at. And there's a few other things, but we'll talk about those later. We're going to turn our fluid volume all the way in and then we're going to back it out two turns from closed. One, two. Our fan pattern we're going to open all the way up and then we're going to dial it back a quarter of a turn. This is going to narrow it down just a little bit. This is going to help your clear coat flow out a little bit better. Turns out from closed is going to give you a thin coat of clear. We're going to adjust that. This is probably not where we're going to leave it. But when we, after we spray our first pass, we're going to adjust this accordingly. I'm going to show you that when we spray the clear. But let's go ahead and put some base color on this. We've got some white that we're going to spray on this and get this all covered and then we'll move into the clear coat. For the settings when we spray our base coat, we're going to leave the settings the same other than the air pressure. I'm going to dial that air pressure down to about 20 to 24 PSI right in there. I've already washed this with some isopropyl alcohol and we've got it nice and clean. So we'll just tack it off and then we'll spray our first coat of base. Now you want to overlap on your base coat about 70%, 70, 75%. You want to have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. One thing to remember is you cannot get a smooth clear coat if you don't have a smooth substrate. So this primer has been sanded with 600 grit sandpaper. It's entirely smoothed out and ready for paint and clear coat.
Okay, let's apply the second coat of base. So we've got our base coat all laid out. It's nice and smooth. Now it's time to lay the clear coat. I am going to tack over this, make sure there's no dust on it. But what I want you to understand about your clear coat, I want you to understand how your gun settings and your speed and your distance affect how your clear coat lays on this panel. If I have my gun settings set at 30 PSI, two turns out from close, this is going to limit the amount of clear coat that's coming out of the gun, okay? You want thin, wet coats for a flat looking finish. Now, if I start to spray and I'm eight to 10 inches away, I'm getting dry spray, then all I have to do is close that distance to the panel a few inches, maybe five to six inches away, and that's gonna flatten out that clear coat. Now, you can also adjust your volume and turn it up just a bit and get, a, and get more material coming out of your gun to smooth out that finish. But what I want you to understand is how your speed and your distance are gonna affect the clear coat. I'm gonna spray a pass here at about six to eight inches away, and then I'm gonna do another pass it a little bit closer and show you the difference. Six to eight inches away here. Okay, you see how it's a little bit dry there? Can you see that? It's not quite as wet, okay? So if I, I close the distance just a little bit, and now we have a nice smooth finish. Now if you close the distance, you have to increase your speed. Because if you close the distance and you go at the same speed, you're gonna run it, okay? Now if you want, if that's too close for you, really I spray about five to six inches away typically and no problem. But look how smooth that finish is. Can you see that? And that's just the first coat. So I'm gonna leave these gun settings where they're at and I'm gonna spray five to six inches away and we'll see what kind of finish we get on the first coat. Don't be concerned if you have a little bit of texture in your first coat. The second coat, you can hit it a little bit heavier and get a flatter looking finish. If you start spraying and you see that it's got a little bit of texture, you can adjust your gun. But just understand that as you lay that down, after you do your first pass and a few 
probably like five seconds after that, you're going to see that clear coat flow out just a little bit. So if it looks a little rough going on, give it a second. It may just flow out, okay? So we've got a few little particles of dust, but overall it looks really nice. We're going to hit it a little bit harder. I'm going to bump up the volume just a little bit more on my uh, fluid, and we'll hit it a little bit harder on the second coat. Okay. Okay, so let's look at it now. Look how glassy that is. Right off the gun, right after I sprayed it. I increased my pressure just a little bit. I decreased my distance. And actually I slowed down my speed a little bit as well. It's all about practicing guys. It's all about playing with your adjustments trying some different things, but if you, you have to start with a baseline, 30 PSI, tur two turns out from close or 2.5, and then adjust your speed and your distance, play around with it, see what works best for you, and you can lay down a beautiful looking finish. You shouldn't have to struggle with orange peel. So if you wanna learn more, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.